at Cape Canaveral, the nation's newest ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, is ready for its maiden flight. The Air Force's 90-foot missile is more powerful and technically more sophisticated than the Atlas, which is nearing operational status. But the two-stage Titan is still in the development stage. Its ultimate range will be possibly as much as 9,000 miles. And the moment of truth is at hand for the Titan. The site we're at today is a Titan I nuclear missile base. So it housed three Titan I ICBMs. This was Cold War, early 60s. Uh, my name is David Bruns, and I'm an instructor at Undersea Adventures in Kennewick. There was never any missiles fired from this base. They did all the Titan I testing down in, um, somewhere in Colorado. Um, so the missiles were deployed here, and they sat here for just over two years, and then they, these sites were decommissioned, and they took the missiles out. Well, these sites were decommissioned because they were obsolete before they were even done being built. They had better missiles um, with longer range and more accuracy um, and that were less maintenance to maintain before this was even activated. So. This base is flooded, I guess, because some really unique geological features because we're in the desert and we're at high altitude and just over here is a valley that drops down five or six hundred feet and the bottom of the valley is dry. Um, so I'm not exactly sure why there's so much water up here, but we get surface water about 30 feet from the surface um, and it just floods into those launchers. The city is about five miles that direction is Royal City, Washington, which is a tiny little, <laughs> little city. Um, but this, this complex is actually attached to Larson Air Force Base, which is up at Moses Lake, which is only about 30 miles north of here. The Titan I missile that was actually, there were three of them here at this complex. Um, they were the United States first um, two-stage uh, ballistic missile. Um, and they were one of the first intercontinental ballistic missiles. Um, their range was somewhere in the 7,000 mile range. Um, they were about 90 feet tall, 10 feet in diameter, and at their Highest speed, they were going just over 18,000 miles an hour and 500 feet up in, I guess, low orbit. And then they would just go on a ballistic trajectory and could get within about three miles of their target. Um, and they carried a huge warhead that, I believe it was a 3.75 megaton warhead, which translates to, to about um, 250 times the Hiroshima bomb. So it was a really big warhead. Um, the missile and its entire launch platform had to be brought up on an elevator to the surface level um, before it could be launched. So launching this missile was a very complicated process and it took about 15 minutes to get the missile off the ground. Well the dive itself we go down tunnels underground that are half submerged with water um, or waist to chest deep water and then we go into the launcher that is a vertical shaft. It starts at the surface has about 50 feet of air and then about 110 feet of water um, and so it's about 50 foot diameter concrete tube with um, a 35 foot square crib work that's steel that goes all the way up the top. I first started diving here about 15 years ago um, but we've really been picking it up and um, taking groups a lot more in the last three years. I like diving the site because um, I mean, it's, a, it's dark tunnels underground that are full of water. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like the, the high school boy's dream of coming and exploring down here. Um, it's crystal clear water. Um, you can see a lot of the history. And with taking groups down here, um, I really like seeing how excited some people get um, at seeing this. This is something that most people will never see in their entire lives.
we offer a missile silo diver distinctive specialty um, and I'm pretty sure we're the only ones that offer that class. The dry side over here that we're standing next to was essentially the personnel side. We have the, the flooded half blocked off so that kids don't get down there and, and damage things. And so it's all part of the same complex. This end is where the personnel lived and where the generators were and the radars, all of that. Um, the part we dive is only the actual launch tube end of the complex. If I could go back and see when this was operational and when all the equipment was sitting there, all the old computers and everything, that would be, that would be awesome. I spoke with a local gentleman um, over here in Royal City who said when he was, when he was a kid, um, he a couple times looked out across the field and saw the tips of missiles poking up out of the ground and said that, that they would never know if this was a test or if this was going to be the real thing and they just hoped that they'd put them back down on the ground and they wouldn't see them heading up. <laughs>